اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ون وے انووا کمپیرنگ تھری اور مور گروپ مینس ٹیسٹ ٹو کمپیئر مینس یوزنگ ون وے انووا ایٹ دا اینڈ آف دس سیشن یو شوڈ بی ایبل ٹو آنسر دا فالوئنگ کوشچنس explain how an ANOVA test differs from the t-test and explain the purpose of post hoc tests. The aim of this session is to discuss the testing of differences between mean values on a central variable that is the variable of interest or the dependent variable between three or more groups. When we examined the differences between two groups, we used t-test. However, when moving to an examination of differences between three or more groups, we can extend the logic of the t-test to a method known as analysis of variance or ANOVA. As discussed before, examining and understanding how groups of individuals can differ is one of the key goals of psychology. Now, there are many different groups of people that make up society, either with their own biology, environment and values. It makes sense that many of these groups would vary on different psychological constructs and behaviors. In psychology, examining these differences can be key to understanding differences in their mental and social processes. Now, this is not just true to psychology. One way ANOVA can be used in other fields as well to assess the differences between groups, that is, three or more groups. This is important when considering if treatments for mental health concerns actually work or if there are long-term trends in behaviors across ages and groups. Now, there are two main types of difference tests. Those that look at differences between groups and those that look at differences within groups. Between group differences examine how two groups can differ from each other across a variable. Within group differences are similarly important. Now you are not looking at differences between two groups but rather the differences between same group taken at different time points. Remember that when we talk about differences, we are talking about the differences between the mean of one group at one point in time with another point in time. To examine differences between or within groups, you also need to know the standard deviation of both means you are comparing as well as the number of participants. With the mean, the measure of variance within the samples standard deviation and number of data points or participants, you can use the t-test to calculate if the difference between two means is statistically significant. The main aim of one-way ANOVA is to evaluate if the means of the samples are sufficiently different from each other to suggest that they are representative of different populations. The main difference between an ANOVA and t-test is that you can use one-way ANOVA to test if there are differences in more than two groups. An example would be if you wanted to check to see if there are differences in class attendance for first, second and third year university students in a particular course. Now, What are the assumptions for one-way ANOVA? Now your dependent variable has to be a continuous variable. That is, it needs to be measured on interval or ratio scale. Now, when testing three or more independent categorical group, it is best to use one-way ANOVA. So, there are more than two groups that needs to be compared. We are going to use one-way ANOVA. Now, you should have independence of observations, which means that there is no relationship between the observations in each group or between the groups themselves. For example, there must be different participants in each group with no participant being in more than one group. 
the dependent variable should be normally or near to normally distributed for each group. It is worth noting that while the t-test is robust to minor violations in normality, if your data is very non-normal, it should be worth using a non-parametric alternative or bootstrapping. We are going to focus on this later as well. Now there should not be outliers, spurious outliers, too many outliers. The data must have homogeneity of variance. Now this assumption can be tested using Levine's test for homogeneity of variance in the statistics package. If your data fails this assumption, you will need to not only carry out Welsh ANOVA instead of one-way ANOVA, which you can do using SPSS or R, but also use different post hoc tests. Now your sample size, a consideration for ANOVA is homogeneity. Homogeneity in this context just means that all of the group's distribution and errors differ approximately the same way, regardless of the mean of each group. So homogeneity is the assessment of groups' distribution and errors that they differ in approximately similar manner between the groups. The more incompatible or unequal the group sizes are in the simple one-way ANOVA between subjects ANOVA, the more important the assumption of homogeneity is. Unequal group sizes in factorial designs can create ambiguity in results. A significant result indicates that homogeneity has been violated. Equal cell sizes. It is preferable to have a similar or the same number of observations in each group. This provides a stronger model that tends not to violate any of the assumptions. Having unequal groups can lead to violations in normality or homogeneity of variance. Now let's move to assessment of one-way ANOVA using R. Now in order to assess one-way ANOVA in R, now I'm reading the data from my SPSS file. You can read it from CSV file as well. There are videos on the channel on how to read it from CSV file. The link will be shared in the description. So first I need this library to read my data from an SPSS file. First, I need this library to read my data from a SPSS file. So library haven h a v e n. Then this object will hold my data. Read underscore s a v function will read this data file that is in the same folder as my R script. That's why I do not have the full path here. You can view your data. Using this command, I put it in comments. You can remove the comments and use view function to view your data once you have called in this particular function. So let's say we can view it, run it, and here it is. Let's select this whole, call this function, and here is your data. You can move between columns as well. Now, next thing, I'm going to extract the variable of interest and perform my group assignments. So here is my variable of interest vision, my categorical independent variable in my sample data. So in my sample data, my categorical independent variable is rank and my dependent variable is vision. Now, I do not need this to run my ANOVA. I can run my ANOVA results without this, but I will need this to report my results later. So what I'm going to do is I've got three ranks, junior, middle and senior, and I'm interested in assessing whether the communication of vision, which is my dependent variable, differs across these three ranks, that is junior, middle and senior. So you can split the data into three groups. So variable is my data. Where is my variable? Here is my variable that holds the data for vision. And data for rank one goes in here. Data for rank two, that is middle, goes in here. And data for rank three goes in here. So remember, variable is the object that is 
holding vision from sample data and for group 1 the data is here for group 2 it's here for group 3 it is here now let's run this and let's see details of the rank variable the independent variable group 1 junior 90 employees 90 respondents middle ranked 206 senior rank 44 look at this how am i calling it the table function this is my data set sample data dollar sign and within this data set i've got this rank variable now i can take the mean of each group as well and the standard deviation using mean function and standard deviation function now this is possible now because i've assigned each of the variable that is my vision for each of the group into these objects here these variables now moving on how do i calculate my or perform my anova analysis so i'm going to use aov function parenthesis open my dependent variable y that is sample data and in the sample data vision is my dependent variable then this sign and then as dot factor this is very important you have to convert your independent variable into a factor variable and in the parenthesis you have to call sample data dollar sign and then your categorical predictor variable comma give r the data set and once you run it you store the results here whatever you get from this function you store it here let's run it now once you run it next you need to call in the summary function to produce your results summary function will produce the results for this object holding the results from this particular function home run it now here are your results now the differences as we see are insignificant because the p-value is greater than 0 0.05 so there are no differences in communication of vision across the three job ranks now again as i mentioned earlier remember to use as factor you can run your ANOVA using another method as well by calling in the linear model function instead of AOV function again the linear model function sample data vision is my dependent variable as dot factor remember this sign convert your independent variable into factor using this function here now run it and you can produce the results like this Now here are your results. Now what it does is it gives you the impact of or rather it converts this into dummies and gives you the impact of each of the categories with reference to the reference category on the dependent variable. But this is not how am I going to use it. So I'm going to use it differently. So once you do this, SPSS uses type 3 sum of squares so to have similar results we will use type 3 sum of squares method to calculate our ANOVA results now since linear model is used for regression so if you just run the summary as we did you are going to get regression results we are going to look into this later if you have got categorical predictor variable now in this case i'm interested in ANOVA not linear regression so i'm going to use ANOVA function parenthesis open model where is my model here is my model and that holds this formula type 3 sum of squares now run it error in model could not find the function ANOVA so where is this ANOVA function defined if we write in here ANOVA we will see this library so it is defined in car library so let's call in this library car and now let's run it 
Now here are your ANOVA results. So is it significant? No, it is not significant. The communication of vision is insignificant. There are insignificant differences in the communication of vision across the three groups that is junior, middle and senior. Now we need to find out or let's say, let's assume if the results were significant. So if the results were significant, we would run the post hoc analysis to see which groups have got significant differences. To so do so, we need Levine's test of equality of variance. So the step one is to find out whether there are significant differences. Yes, there are significant differences. Now, which groups have got significant differences? Either junior to middle, middle to senior or junior to senior. Now, to do so, we need multiple comparison test. And to run multiple comparisons test, we've got different options. And those options are based on the results of Levine's test, whether your equal variances were assumed or not. So we will run the Levine test and it is defined in this library of car. Let's run it. And Levine's test for homogeneity of variance based on mean. And this is insignificant. So this means that equal variances is assumed. Now what if this Levine's test was significant? Then we would not have reported these results for one way and over. We would have run Welsh test because our equal variances was not assumed. So how do you run Welsh test? You simply call in one way dot test your sample that is your y variable from the sample data then this sign here as factor because your independent variable is a factor variable comma sample data now run it and here are your results when your equal variances is not assumed now in this case since our equal variance is assumed how do we do our post hoc analysis to do post hoc analysis when equal variance is assumed, we can use Tucky HSD and this is the object that we are going to use because we used it earlier for our ANOVA results as well here. To get these results, just simply run it. Run and look at the group differences here. The p-value, well, all the group difference, the difference between group 2 and 1, that is your middle and junior is insignificant, senior and junior is insignificant, and senior and middle is insignificant. Because look at this, the p-value greater than 0 0.05, p-value greater than 0 0.05, p-value greater than 0 0.05. Now what if your equal variance was not assumed? Now in that case, what we will do is we will run games how will test how to do this okay let's so we need this package our statistics statics and this is the library if the package is not installed please you can install it like this so let's call in this library our statics and games how will underscore test parenthesis open your data is this, your y variable, that is your dependent variable, your independent variable, the tilde sign, and then confidence level is 0.95, detailed is equal to false, and let's see what we get. And this is when your equal variances is not assumed. Run it, and here are your results. And look at these, there are different results, but for now I'm just focusing on this p-value here not significant, not significant, not significant. So the differences between one and two, that is junior and middle, junior and senior, middle and senior with respect to your y variable are insignificant. So this is how you can run one way ANOVA in R.